So we have a bit of a feud that appears to be brewing between the orange clown and the Republican Party. I have no intention of covering Donald Trump uh, any more than is absolutely necessary, but I thought this was quite a revealing story in terms of uh, why he engages in politics and how explicit he is in his selfish intent in engaging in politics. Um, He sent, for those that haven't seen details, he sent cease and desist orders to Republican operatives demanding that they stop using his his name, his family's name, his likeness um, to elicit donations and promote their cause. And they have now responded and basically said, no, we have the right to political free speech. You are a public figure and we're going to continue to use your likeness. Um, so, it, you know, I'll be interested if this actually ends up in the courts somehow. I don't will the kind of the Trump's clearly looking at it from a business perspective of you have to pay me to use my likeness. Right. It'll be interesting to see if that comes to clash with the political free speech aspect. Um, but I I think it's revealing in the sense that, like, Trump clearly very explicitly engages in politics as a branding exercise. Um, it's marketing. It's business to him. I don't really think Trump gives a damn about policy uh, outside of the extent that that policy directly financially benefits him. <laughs> It, and it's it's just kind of remarkable how clear he is willing to make that in his actions and in his his words. Um, and I think like compared to I don't mean to minimize the type of corruption that a lot of politicians engage in. It's all corrupt and it all should be unanimously and harshly condemned. But I, I do think that a lot of politicians just in analyzing like how they get to that position, I think they really do, on some level, delude themselves into thinking that they are not engaging in quid pro quo, that they're not corrupt, you know, that they're doing what's right and they happen to be getting donations too. I think when that donor comes knocking and hands you the check, you know, I think that a lot of politicians are just pretty good at kind of convincing themselves that what enriches them is is also right for the American people. Um, and I think that they would like really truly deny even to themselves that they're engaging in corruption. Trump clearly is is very explicit in his engaging in corruption and his um engaging in politics as a marketing exercise. So, I I thought that was just quite fascinating. Um who knows if he's going to run in 2024? I've said before that I think he's also doing this as a branding exercise. He knows that if he keeps dangling that and lets everybody speculate that that keeps the spotlight on him to some extent over the next four years. Um, and that's all that he ever really cares about is money and attention. So I think that he will continue to, you know, leave that up in the air as long as possible. I have no idea if he intends to run or not. No idea whatsoever. His numbers have in- interestingly fallen quite a bit in the Republican Party in terms of um, the polling for 2024 candidates and and things like that. It seems like once he was out of the spotlight for a few weeks, um, they started to pivot to other candidates. So he still, by the way, I don't mean to overstate things. He still was by far number one. It just had fallen compared to what it was when he left office among Republican voters. So... He may need to be in the media spotlight to maintain the kind of popularity that he has in the Republican Party. Uh, And despite, by the way, you guys, despite what I think a lot of mainstream media sources might tell you, they like to really imply that Trump does not represent Republicans. Trump very much represents Republicans. They don't like that he's uncouth. They don't like him on Twitter. Right. But policy wise, Trump very much represents Republicans, and he's about as popular as any Republican figure. He's like Reagan to them. He's like modern Reagan. Um, so I think there's a misconception that that Republicans are John Kasich, you know, and the voter base just does not agree with that. When you look at favorability numbers, when you look at who they want to be the 2024 nominee, um, they're, it's not Mitt Romney. Right. It's not Kasich. It's not like the idea that 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 very calm kind of reserved but classically conservative viewpoint or whatever is popular among Republican voters. That's just not true. It's not. Just look at I mean, what happened in the primary in in 2016. 
So um, I think if Trump wants to run, I think he will be the candidate. I think it's equally possible that he decides not to run, but decides he's going to kind of pull the strings and endorse somebody. So he would basically be picking the nominee if that were the, you know, um, if he doesn't want to go back to the White House. And I also think his tendency, you guys, like Trump, by all reports, um, very lazy person, likes to watch cable news, likes to golf, did not like to be president. Um, liked the attention of being president, did not like the duties of being president, right? Um, spent a lot of time at Mar-a-Lago, etc. I think Trump loves the position he's currently in. He gets to basically pull the strings from behind the curtain where he doesn't have to do all the hard work. He can golf and watch cable news, but then he can like call Kevin McCarthy down to Florida. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> And demand this or that and kind of pull the strings behind the curtain without all of the responsibilities, without all of the duties of actually being president. Um, and I think that he will probably maintain that as long as possible while understanding that dangling his 2024 run is a marketing exercise. And I think that his sending, sending these cease and desist orders is an example of how he views his engagement in politics. Purely selfish, purely rapacious, purely as a marketing exercise for the Trump brand.